Greetings, my name is Neil Mahowski with the Mississippi Library Commission's Department of Technology Services, and today I'm going to be presenting a webinar on basic troubleshooting of Windows PC problems. First thing we're going to discuss is what is troubleshooting? We have a very nice, long, complicated definition here. Troubleshooting is a systematic approach to problem solving that is also often used to find and correct issues with complex machines, electronics, computers, software systems, and the first step in troubleshooting is gathering information on the issue, such as an undesired behavior or lack of expected functionality. Now, basically, what does that say? We're going to isolate the source of the problem and we're going to fix it. In the case of computer systems, troubleshooting is usually a hardware related issue. You also hear the terms debugging and compatibility used. These are most of the time dealing with software. All right, there are six basic steps to troubleshooting. First thing we're going to do is identify the problem. Then we're going to establish a theory of probable causes, basically what can cause this to happen. Then we are going to test the theories to, to determine if any of these are the actual cause of the problem. If none of the ones we established previously in step two turn out to be true in step three, we're going to have to go back to step two and think about this again. Once we do figure out what the problem, the cause is, we're going to establish a plan to resolve that problem and implement the solution. After we do that, we're going to verify full system functionality and implement any preventative measures that need to be taken to possibly keep this from happening again. In step six, which I'm very guilty of not doing all the time, we want to document what we did to fix it. Now we're going to go into a sample problem. We walk up, we press the power button on the computer, it doesn't come on. So probable causes, power cords unplugged. Bad power source, outlet, or a tripped breaker in the building. If it's plugged into a power strip, has that power strip gone bad or possibly need to be reset? So now we're going to check those issues. We're going to make sure it's plugged in securely on the back of the computer and the power outlet. If it's plugged into a power outlet, we can plug a device such as a lamp or a radio into it to see if we get light or sound out of the outlet. If it's plugged into a surge protector or other things on that surge protector working, is the surge protector turned on? Some surge protectors also have breakers that may, may need to be reset. In this case, we're going to say the power cord was unplugged from the power strip. Something you may need to check in this case, why was that computer unplugged? Does anybody in the area have any idea how this thing got unplugged? If someone goes, yeah, I unplugged it because it was smoking, well, we may need to go back and take a look. We've now got a whole nother problem. All right, we're gonna assume everything was good and it was just unplugged. So our plan of action is going to be to plug it back in. And to implement that, we're gonna plug it back in. After we do that, we're going to try turning it on again. It should turn on at this point and start booting up. It may take longer to boot up than normal because it was likely shut down improperly. All right, this is where we look at preventative measures. Can we move that power strip to where it's less accessible for that cord to be unplugged again? And at this point, we want to document. We want to keep track of when and what problems they encounter, when they are encountered, what did we do to fix it? And what did we do to prevent it? All right, our next problem is when I move the mouse, nothing happens. First thing we're usually gonna do is pick up the mouse. Do we see a laser light? Is there something underneath the mouse? This tends to happen a lot around April Fool's Day. Being, if we see our light, we may be okay. Uh, other things we can check is the connection, try unplugging it and plugging it back in. We try plugging it into a different port. If it's plugged into a hub or a switch, we may want to try and plug it directly into the computer or even try that mouse or another mouse on a different computer. 
or try another mouse on this computer. All right, if you're using a wireless mouse, you wanna make sure you have the proper receiver plugged into the computer. Is the mouse actually turned on? Does the mouse possibly need new batteries? All right, next problem, come in, turn the computer on. I hear it come on. I see a little light blinking on the front of it, but nothing shows up on the screen. All right, is the monitor plugged in and turned on? You're going to see this a lot through a lot of troubleshooting issues. First thing you check, do I actually have power to it? Is the monitor actually connected to the computer? Is the cord somehow come loose on either end? All right, you can also tell a lot by looking at the light on the front of the monitor. If it's a green or solid color, it normally means you have a good, good connection and you should be seeing something. A yellow or flashing light is a sign of not having a good connection. If you have no light at all, that basically means you have no power. In some cases on the monitors, they have select selectable inputs. You may, may need to make sure that your monitor is actually set to accept the input coming from the computer. Good old printer issues. All right, printer will not print. Again, is it plugged in and turned on? All right, some printers also have a very long wake time from sleep mode. We have one here in the building that you better print about five minutes before you want it because it takes that long to warm up. All right, is there a paper jam or is your printer low on paper? A lot of times it will tell you this on your computer screen, but sometimes it will not. You will actually have to look at the printer. All right. Is, do you have toner or ink in your printer? As by that first little slide there, some color printers may refuse to print if they do not have full cartridges of every color. All right, if the printer is a network printer, is the printer still plugged into the network? Is your network up? And are the printer and computer on the same network? This happens a lot when you're wireless. All right. You can also go check the print queue and control panel to see if maybe a document is hung or if the printer has been somehow set to be used offline. All right. You do this by coming down here and going to control panel, opening devices and printers. You right click on the printer you're trying to use and go here to see what's printing. If you have documents in queue, they will show up right here. If you have one hung, you can try highlighting it and telling it to either cancel or restart. The print offline box is right here. If you have a check mark beside that, your printer will not print. You will have to uncheck that. All right, wireless or Bluetooth issues. All right, is the device turned on and connected to the wireless system you're trying to use? Does the device have a full charge? Do you have the proper device driver installed on the computer you're trying to hook to? You check for software updates and download and install any high priority updates. You should possibly solve that problem. All right. If an application or program becomes stuck or frozen, i.e. I've got Google open and it won't let me close the window. You can force hit quit the application either by hitting control alt delete and selecting task manager from that menu that comes up. Or if you come down on a Windows 11 machine and right click on the Windows icon, you can select task manager right here. What you would then do is find the process that's hung, select it, and select end task. This is also a good way of getting rid of some of these scarewares that come up. If you're in, say, uh, Firefox and you get one of the antivirus saying your computer's infected and you can't close out of that box, 
you can come down there and start closing out your Firefox windows without having to reboot your computer. All right, if all else fails, you can try restarting your computer to close. This will definitely close anything that's open. All right, in the extreme measure, and I do not suggest doing this in the list, absolutely necessary you can do what i call a one finger reboot where you just press and hold the power button for five to ten seconds this will definitely shut the computer down in 99.9 .9 percent of the time if that does not do it you can unplug the power cable from the electrical outlet or the back of the computer this will definitely shut it down if you're using a laptop you may also need to remove the battery if that's possible Again, these are a last resort because you take the chance of actually messing up your operating system by doing this. All right, applications running slowly, try closing it and reopening it. There may be an update out there that it needs. Um, if it's a very intensive program, you may be running out of hardware space or RAM, which is random access memory. You can try running disk defragmenter. It may be possible that Windows has stored it in various locations and they need to be brought back together. Or there may actually be a possible virus on your computer, which running a virus scanner will get rid of. All right, good offense makes a good defense. How can we avoid some problems? Make sure all your programs are up to date have a functioning antivirus or anti-malware program installed. Keep the areas around your computers clean and uncluttered. Computers do not like liquid. Run cables in a way that they are not likely to be stepped on, pulled, or pinched. Check the hardware life cycle, capabilities, and duty cycle of the equipment you're using. A standard Windows PC is normally good for about five years. When we start talking duty cycle, that has a lot more to do with printers. If you're trying to use a printer that's only rated for about 300 pages a day and you're putting a thousand through it, it's not gonna last or run very well. All right, other points to consider, when in doubt, reboot. That will fix a goodly bit of problems that are encountered with Windows machines. All right, if you suspect you do have a virus on a network computer, get it off the network as quick as possible. This will keep you from possibly infecting other machines that are on your network. All right, if you come across a web page that will not open, try another browser. There are some web pages out there that are written to run in specific browsers. All right, you can also try Google. There's a lot of forums out there that have very good information. Um, take some of them with a grain of salt. If the first thing they come up with and say is you need to re-image your computer, I'd look for another source or call us. All right. And on the call us, we're always here to help. We're happy to help. Here's the number to our tech support desk and our help desk email. And that concludes this webinar.